Hello everyone. Thank you very much for joining me today. Um, Happy New Year and I really appreciate what the second day of the new year you hear in my studio in Montreal. That's really, really cool. And today will be not usual uh, live streaming. Um, you don't see me, you see my table. Uh, because I want to show you a few tricks and secrets which normally you do not see. So, uh, our subject for today, uh, this is the beautiful Armenia, uh, it's an amazing picture, you see the, the, this, it, you know, it's, it's I can, what I can say is just wow, uh, the colors, the shadows, that's great. But also this, you see the grayish colors here, it looks really, really nice, and that's what I want to talk today, how to mix the gray. And uh, normally, if you uh, are following me and saw the live stream and you saw like I'm preparing everything in advance. So my paper normally with a sketch already wet. So this time today we starting from zero and you will see all the process. And plus you will see something what uh, normally outside of the table. Like for instance, this one, you see, this is a lot of paper towel and I use this a lot to take off the pigments from an extra water from my brush. So it's from my left hand right here. And this is the piece of the Saunders water for 300 grams white paper. Uh, but you know, normally it's a double side paper, you know that. Uh, this is the front side and the back side. So always I'm painting on the back side. The reason is, you see the back side here, uh, more soft. It's more close to the cold press paper. Uh, but the front side, the real front side, very textured. I, I know what you don't see that on the web camera, but if you take that in your hands, you will see that. It's very strong texture of the paper. So I prefer to use the, the back side. And by the way, during all the streaming, please feel free to ask me any questions. You just can tape it in the chat. I will see that I have a technical support and we can talk. So before I'm starting to prepare my paper, as I say, I want to talk about the gray mixes. You know, uh, I have a lot of friends, the artists, the different guys, and uh, then we have a time to meet each other and to talk. We always share our secrets and one of the interesting discovery all the artists looking for the gray colors how to mix the gray it's really really interesting so one of the most traditional mix uh, it's that two guys burnt amber and french ultramarine but you should know that traditional mix uh, here in watercolor we have because of the oil it's very very old traditional mix and it's really not nice for watercolor and the reason is simple you will see that first of all the burnt amber it's not 100 percent transparent color it's a little bit opaque and ultramarine uh, the granulated colors so that means your shadow will be kind of unpredictable but Traditionally, that's exist. Okay, hello Mark, welcome to join. Uh, I'll repeat it again, uh, the question about the paper. Uh, look, if you take the, uh, this is my favorite paper. This is a Saunders Water Ford, 300 grams, high white and rough. And uh, like, because it's a double side paper, I mean, uh, both sides is paintable. The front side, very uh, strong texture. Uh, it's very textured. And the back side, a little bit more softly, close to the cold press. So I can say the back side of the rough paper, something between cold press and rough. That's why I prefer that. It's a little bit more softly and the, the texture a little bit more natural compared to the real uh, real front side so that's the reason but as I say it's a double side paper and both sides is paintable again any questions all my experience at your service 
So this is the bird amber. That's, as I say, it's a traditional mix uh, coming from oil. And that's the ultramarine. Here is it. If we mix them together, we will have a soft gray color. Here is it. So that's uh, normally what people use for watercolor. Again, for my feeling, it's a bad idea. First of all, because of the ultramarine's granulated color and the burnt amber not 100% transparent. Uh, I use a little bit different mix. So my alternative is the this. It's the Queen of Credon Sienna. Here is it. It's very bright orange color. Uh, it's a sienna, so it's uh, special on the web camera. It's look like very bright. It's a little bit softly. And instead of the ultramarine, I use the indigo. Here is it. Together, I have a brownish mix, you see? But a little bit more indigo, and we have a very nice gray. So idea is you can control it. A little bit more sienna, you have a warm gray. A little bit more indigo, you have a cold gray. So that's brilliant combination and this is a hundred percent transparent so this is one of the best solution if you don't need that dark colors my advice uh, use the cobalt instead of the indigo here is it that's the cobalt uh, again for my feelings the main um, primary color and that's our queen sienna together we have another one gray mix soft nice and transparent for my feeling, that's the best solution, and we uh, will use today uh, that combination and this combination. Uh, by the way, you see my travel palette. Uh, first of all, for sure, all the colors here from the Daniel Smith. In that set, uh, you will find all that colors. The Daniel Smith make it special for me, so all what I have here is there. And it's very important ability to mix the great colors just like that, very simple. So that uh, carefully made combination of the colors give me a chance to make any kind of gray. On my workshops, we always talking about the colors and how to make the nice gray mixes. So now you know my basic mixes. Again, any questions, feel free to ask me. Okay, good question about the uh, the paper. No, no, no. The cold press uh, better to use the front side. And uh, honestly, it doesn't matter if we're talking about the Arches or Sanders Waterford paper. Uh, cold press the front side and the back side uh, almost equal, so no difference. Uh, I'm talking just about the rough paper and uh, Sanders Waterford. So this is the piece of paper, and let's try to prepare our paper. This is our reference photo. Uh, first of all, the reference photo is the square. And uh, I want to make it like a landscape because we're talking about the landscape and I like that line. So I will start from the sketch by pencil. The paper is dry. Again, this is the back side and I'm using it like a front. And my first line is where is the, this, the horizon line. So I can keep it here so you can see uh, the reference photo. This is my horizon line. Here is it. And the castle. So that's all what I need for sketching. By the way, in um, in the end of April, uh, I will hold a workshop in Armenia and we will be on that place. And can you imagine, be here and see that beautiful view in real. That's, that's fantastic. By the way, uh, about the Armenia, I can tell you that's a really uh, amazing country. Uh, as you know, I'm traveling a lot, and sometimes I look at the photos what I uh, took uh, in my travels, and I'm not sure, is it Italy or it's Spain and France? Sometimes it's look uh, very similar, uh, except for sure it's like, a, except the famous places. But if I see the photos from Armenia, uh, you know, you always know what's the country is that and that's really cool 
So that's the sketch and I don't have to do more. It's just measuring space. Uh, maybe just we can add the mountain here, but that's it. So as I say, the paper have to be prepared. Normally you never saw how I did it because I am doing that before I start the workshop. So the process is now I wet the back side first and by the way, it's a great brush. You see, I, I like how it's look like and it's just perfect for this. Not just for wet paper, it's good for painting. I'm using that on the big size paper for painting process. So we wait in the back side. We have uh, 95 people. Thank you very much for joining me in the beginning of this year. And if you don't mind, please give us a like because that helps to other people to find that video. And I really appreciate it. Beginning of the year with you. Thank you. And yeah, thank you for all your comments and Happy New Year. And I wish you all the best in the new year. So look, the paper is wet on the front, paper is wet on the back, but it's not enough. The truth is, for now, between fibers, still a lot of air. So I have to repeat the same uh, again and again and again. Before my paper, which is pretty strong, you know, that at 300 grams, going to be soft like a paper towel. In that case, I can say that's ready. Uh, this, uh, in my hand, yeah, I see the question about the brand of my brush. In my hand, this is a Korean brand, uh, Herent, and that's a real handmade, a great quality brand. Unfortunately, it's really hard to find that uh, brand that brushes uh, in the internet. But if you go into the some uh, famous festivals like a Fabriano, for instance, uh, this brand exists there and you can find that brushes. And my advice, if you will see that brand again, here's how it looks like. If you will see that, you can be sure that's the 100% quality and brilliant brush. You never and it will be lost if you buy that. So my advice, if you have a chance, take it. It's really great. You say I repeat that again and again, so it takes a time. And before, yeah. Yes, this is the uh, question about the paper. This is a Saunders Water Fort, again, 300 grams and 100% cotton, uh, you know, except there's some very specific uh, techniques uh, for watercolor. My advice, never use the uh, not 100% cotton paper. For, again, for the some sketching techniques, for the some painting uh, techniques, it's good. But for normal process, we need a really professional tools like uh, this paper. For my feeling, this is the best paper what we have, or one of the best. So in the end, uh, I use this brush the same with a big pressure. So I remove the air between my paper and the board and take off the extra water. So normally I spend like around 15 minutes to uh, wet my paper again and again till I feel what this is the really soft and ready for process. And uh, back to our um, reference photo. You see here we have a white and uh, I really want to, to leave it like a white, but my paper is wet now on the front and I could make that strong shape here. So the trick is I use the paper tower to remove the water from the top, just like that. So because of this, now I can keep the border and the strong edge. Ha! 
a great question about the Queen of Crown Siena. Uh, there is no alternative. <laughs> you know, uh, I can tell you for now, it's the most popular color uh, in the stores. Uh, this is uh, very useful. And first of all, uh, I mean the Queen of Crown Siena. First of all, it's 100% transparent and very colorful. You need just a little bit pigments to mix everything what you want. If you don't have it, uh, as I say, there is no alternative. It's the best of the best. You can use the burnt amber for sure, it's possible, but the burnt amber, uh, again, not transparent. So that is the best thing. So for a sky, look at the uh, reference photo another one time. Uh, before I start to paint, normally I have to determine what kind of colors I will use for that. So this, all that blue uh, blue part, it's for me it's best combination if I will use the cobalt and the thalo blue color. Here is my palette. That's the cobalt, that's the thalo blue green shade. So that guys together will be perfect for the sky. Going down, here we have a little bit purple. So what I will do, I use the pure and violet. It's right there in the middle. For all the green uh, part, I will use the Sienna, the same indigo, and a little bit like a mine, main green color, thill green blue shade. It's there. So all that colors, all what I need for uh, this painting. And for the mountain, I will use the dry brush. That's why I take off the water. So let's go. Ha, huh, great question about the uh, why not leave the paper in the bathroom. Normally I'm doing exactly the same. I just put my paper in the water and wait 5-10 minutes. Uh, just, uh, you know, here I have a camera in my bathroom. No, that's why I just want to show you the process. But yes, you're right. It's absolutely possible to, to put it in the, in the shower completely. Uh, okay, the question about this Queen Sienna. Uh, Queen Acredon Sienna, this, again, it's a 100% transparent color and very colorful. The burnt Sienna, it's not, it's it's made from the uh, from the ground and it's not transparent. That's the reason why this is not that. I, I prefer, you see, all my palette is a transparent colors. And for me, it's very important because for me, it's like a spirit of watercolor, the transparency. And I'll do my best to keep my mixes like a transparent mixes. Yes, uh, the good question about the uh, the paper and uh, water. That's the reason. You know, if my uh, paper wet completely and there is no air between the fibers. I have a lot of time it's not drying fast i have a lot of time to play with my pigments and do exactly what i want I make soft gradients and blend everything together so that's the reason why i wet it um good question about how much water you know it's impossible to measure uh it's just just feeling it's coming from practice so uh, if uh, if we're asking about the uh then when i stopped to wet my paper uh, then it's starting to be soft like exactly like a paper towel if it's soft like this so it's done i feel it uh, how much water should be on top it depends of your feeling unfortunately again it's impossible to measure 
And look, uh, that's another one, uh, uh, combination how to make the gray. That's what we start to talk today. So Queen Sienna, a little bit indigo, and I have a very uh, soft light color here. This is what I use for my castle. So for a sky, I use, again, if you want to repeat it, phthalo blue color, green shade, it's right here, and the cobalt. That's what I use there. So here, uh, my light on the castle, it's indigo and queen of Pridon Siena. And for the bottom part of the mountains, I use the same blue combination plus a little bit pyrene violet. You will see how it's look like. You see, very soft and nice. And I am always change my mix. That's why it's look different. And th that's the, uh, the job what we're trying to do. We're trying to make the pleasure for eyes, right? So that's why I change my mix all the time. That's, by the way, one of the personal secrets. Why I have limited numbers of colors in my palette. In that case, I am always have to change my mixes and rebuild it and that make it look interesting dry brush so i don't have to uh, paint the details i just use a dry brush and the texture of the mountains come in itself okay uh, i have a very nice question about the brown color uh, give me one minute, I finish at the mountains and I will show you the perfect combination for the brown colors. That's what, I, uh, what I'm using. You see, on my palette, the brown colors do not exist. The reason is I'm mixing them all the time. And I will show you how, just have to finish that first. You see, I'm using the dry brush and the dry brush make the texture of the mountains here for me. That's the reason why I prefer to paint on the rough paper, because it's very easy to make a dry brush strokes there. To make the border more uh, visible, I mix again the same blue colors together plus a pyrene violet plus a little bit indigo. We have 120 people join me today in my studio in Montreal and with my trip to Armenia. Thank you very much for your time today. So you see, I make the border of the shadow a little bit more visible, but it's still blended and connected, so it looks pretty nice. We can uh, add some more details inside because everything is wet and we can continue to blend it and play with it as we want. And special, I need a more darker color around my castle. Because this is my main subject here anyway, and I want to focus on that. So I leave it to dry a little bit, and I promised you to show how to mix the brown colors. That's my main combination again. So this is the Queen Equidon Sienna. Here is it. And Indigo. That's all what we need. Look, this is look like a burnt amber. 
the same, but it's 100% transparent. And that's important. So a little bit more uh, green sienna. We have a soft sienna color. Here is it. A little bit more indigo. We have a raw amber. So all the set what I need uh, with the brown colors, just with the two pigments here, Queen Acridon Sienna and Indigo. Again, remember, we're talking about the Daniel Smith colors, and that's very important. If you use the Indigo from other brands like uh, Windsor Newton, Schmincke, the result will be different because the, uh, the Indigo color a little bit more bluish on that brand. So the Daniel Smith make it grayish. That's why it works perfectly in that combination. Okay, the question about my brushes. Yeah, <laughs> I know it's look like a toy. Uh, sometimes it really look funny. But um, this is the uh, my main tool. It's amazing brushes. If you want on my YouTube channel, you will find the, uh, the video. Uh, we talk about that brushes and I explain all the tricks, why these, how I'm using that, all the things about that brushes. And uh, these brushes exist uh, only on my website. You can find the link in the chat. And th this is the goat, but it's very, very special. So I don't want to repeat the same uh, explanation another one time. Again, uh, you can find uh, the special video. We, we did a special in that case. And you will find all the information about that brushes. That's really unique tool. I couldn't paint without that. So you see, we finished with that. So now I'm going down. Uh, I make some uh, preparation for my uh, green part here. And for this, uh, on my palette, this is the all the colors what I have here in my palette. I have just one green. This is a thalo green blue shade. That's only one green what I need for mix any kind of greens. So that's what I have. It's just a background. After that, we put different colors here. But having this mix, I will change it all the time, so we make it a little bit different. And back to the our gray mix again. But thank you very much for your comment. Yeah, that's that's great brushes. You know, for now that brushes use a lot of like a top level masters like a Proful Savant, Keiko Tanabe, Didier Bro, a lot of guys using that brushes because that's really, really nice stuff. So you see, uh, uh, on the kitchen or on the painting, we always need the different tools. Like these, uh, these brushes, I make like a 70%, 80% of my job. And finally, I use the Skoda brushes. That's my set from Skoda to make the pointy details or some nice touching in the end. So everything works together. Inside uh, my pre pre preparation, I add the different touching here with the different colors and you see everything still wet on wet if you want to follow me and uh, repeat the same uh, painting another one time uh, first of all better to join me on the workshop and we will be here uh, in real or you can just uh, take a screenshot from this photo I hold it like this on the bigger size so take the screenshot, you will see the picture. And if you want, you can repeat it another one time. Uh, by the way, about the workshop in Armenia, it not will be that, like a regular workshop. It's real tour to discover the country. Uh, we have a, a 
a chance to see the museums and going uh, to many, many beautiful places like this. So it will be a real, real tour. And uh, maybe uh, you know, maybe not. If you go into my website, watercolonline.com and click on the workshop button, you will see the uh, my list of the workshops for the this year. It's uh, 28 workshops around the world and almost all of them already sold. So this one uh, in Armenia still, uh, we have still places uh, available. So if you have a chance to join me to discover that beautiful country, believe me, it makes sense. So I'm stuck here to prepare my background. What I just want to do in the end, I just spray it a little bit with the water, just like this. So that's the light part and it's done. So now um, I dry my paper uh, with a hair dryer and apply the second layer. Outside, then we will be outside. It's not necessarily to do, it's drying itself, but here in my studio just to save our time i'll do that So I dry it, but don't be wrong, it's really wet inside and on the back. So we have a dry just the top of the paper. And you can see here, you see a lot of water still, you see the reflection. But what I will do now, I use the tape to fix the paper on the board. Uh, it's necessarily because in other case, in the 15 minutes, it will be curved and not comfortable. So I take off the extra water on the perimeter. Uh, yeah, a good question about, <laughs> about control water. Uh, that's the secret what I show in the beginning. This, that's the secret. Uh, I use a lot of paper towel. I can show you uh, how much I use just in the beginning. So you see that going to the garbage. So all that paper towel I use for this first layer. So the truth is I need the water uh, to make my mixes. That's why I take water, prepare my mix. But before I touch my paper, I take off the extra water like this. So here on my brush, less water, more pigments, and that's why it's more easy to control. That's the reason. So now my paper uh, on my board. It will be hold it very strong and now we can apply the second layer so i'm focusing on my main subject on the castle it's look beautiful here is it and that's pretty dark colors and that contrast make it look nice that's exactly what i need here i use the this time i use the calligraphy brush this one because we're still talking about the big shadows 
before we make the details. And for the dark mix again, indigo, queen sienna, I have a brown colors, a lot of indigo, a lot of queen sienna, so it's pretty dark. And I still trying to use the dry brush. And I change my mix all the time. And because my paper wet inside, I have a chance to blend everything slowly, no rush. It's a very comfortable process. That's why I wet the backside. No rush. I have a time to blend everything what I need. So all of that process again, uh, you don't have to be fast, you can make it slowly and enjoy to create all the details. But I don't want to make that uh, details for now, I will make it later. So for now I make the big shapes of the shadow and keep the contrast. That's the most important point for that step. Yeah, I see the comments. No, no, no. I, I tape my paper here on the perimeter. After I finished my first washing, uh, I make the top dry and I, you see, I tape it. So now it's... And plus, because the air not coming from the side, uh, this tape helped me to hold the paper wet for the longer time. It's a, yeah, I understand why you're asking, because the tape is not visible. Uh, it's the black tape, that one. So that tape, uh, it's the first tape made special for watercolor. It's hold the wet paper. So that's why it's invisible. Plus, you know, it's very comfortable, because normally if we have a, a tape like this color, uh, you'll see a lot of dirt here than you paint. So if it's black, it's like I already frame it. And I like how it's look like. So now I use this brush, I uh, apply the colors and blend it a little bit to make it look different and connect it to my background. You know that we have 125 people you know that video will, will be available uh, to watch uh, after we finish that so you can find this video on my YouTube channel and you can slowly follow in the, the same process another one time and to, f to help uh, other people to find that video if you don't mind please put the like that's how that system works so that make that video more visible. <laughs> I 
a great question about the pellet honestly honestly i never clean my pellet except the video uh just just for you i clean it to make my mixes uh, more visible and understandable normally my pellet look like this and i never clean it because i use the same color so it's not necessarily i'm again back to the same combination but then i have this uh the the dry dirt for my feeling it's like you're brilliant because you couldn't repeat that it just happens at once and it's always pleasure to start the paint in the process from this dirt so thank you for the question it's a very very important question so normally i i never clean it it's just for the for the demo That's another one uh, combination of the gray color. That's the Cobalt Plus Queen Sienna. That's what I'm using here for the for the heel. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for your comments. I appreciate it. No, with, you don't have to put the uh, 100 uh, likes. Uh, I really appreciate what you joined me today, and that's important for me. So because of that contrast, you see it's like a comment to us. What I want to do, uh, I want to paint something on front, but I don't want to uh, make it like a detail. That's why I use the dry brush for this. And again, the secret of the dry brush, uh, I remove the extra water. So what I'm doing, I again use the water here to prepare my mix. But after that, I take the, the paper towel and do this. So I remove the extra water. That's why I can use the dry brush strokes. And plus, somewhere I'm gonna blend it with a clear water. Again, if you still have any questions, we, uh, I believe we will finish that maybe in the 10 minutes, so you still have a chance to ask me something. And look, that, the second layer, still wet. And for now it's a time to switch to the pointy brush to make the details. This is a Skoda, uh, it's a Kronos, uh, number 10. It's a very, very pointy brush. It's a similar to the um, uh, very famous uh, Skoda Perla, but I like this more. It's still uh, the same synthetic, but different hair. And that's really, really great brush. For the details, that's awesome. Uh, okay, Pat, yes, I got your question uh, about the brushes, so uh, about the flat brushes. I, I have a different sizes. This, it's the nine lines brush I use when I'm painting like a big size painting. That's my main tool for the um, more than full sheet like I'm painting in the roll. For the full sheet, I use the seven lines brushes, this one, so it's a little bit uh, smaller size, and that's what I'm using for the full sheet. Normally for the half of the sheet or quarter, my main brush is the five lines, this one. And also I have a three lines brush. This for the details, for the small size, and uh, I'm using that for my sketchbook. Because, uh, you know, no one brush can give me a chance to make that dry brush strokes like that with a soft blending and washing. So I need all of them and uh, always all of them in my set with me. Except again, just nine brush I use just for big size. So all the sizes is available and that's why it's very comfortable to switch to from one size to another one size.
So we add some details there. With a really dark touching. Okay, I got the question about the colors for the sky. Here, it's a combination. It, it, it's still, it's st still there, between cobalt and thale blue green shade. Going down, I add to the same combination, pure and violet and a little bit indigo to create that shadow. And remember, we always make wash out. So I take off the pigments here to make like a nice shiny effect. Okay, okay, Pat, I got the question. Believe me, uh, the two lines, uh, if I do this, it stop works. Because the uh, idea of that brush to, uh, to make a ability to make a dry brush and wash out. So all the process, um, apply the pigments and water and take it off. If it will be just a two lines brush, you can do that. Uh, it will be so small, so soft to collect the pigments and water. So that's why then, you know, then the master did the brushes for me. We make a lot of experiments. We change the size, we change the uh, the, uh, the kind of uh, quality of the hair. We work on that and we, we try the two lines brush. It doesn't work. So it's just, that doesn't work and that's it. So three lines, uh, it's the best for the small size, for my feeling, for sure. For now, I add the very strong contrast here. And you see it's still wet here, so that's the pigments going to blend itself. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for the question about the, the colors in my palette. Look, I, I will show you because I, on the same video, uh, on the, all the videos, I use the same palette and, and exactly in all, the, all the colors in the same order. So here is it, that three guys. This is my primary colors, my personal primary colors. This is the Queen of Cardone Sienna. Uh, and you see, by the way, and, and then you bought uh, the this uh, my travel palette you will have something like that and you you see the order how i feel my palette you will see on that paper exactly so queen of sienna and pure and violet and indigo i'm almost eating that guys i'm using that a lot for all kind of mixing that's why it's a big pants here that line starting from the uh, most lighter this is the <laughs> it looks strange but believe me that's the yellow color this is a Queen of Credone Deep Gold, Alizarin Crimson, Cobalt, Thalo Blue Green Shade, Thalo Green Blue Shade, and the last one, that's funny by the way, this is a neutral tint, but I am never use it for mixing, never ever. It's always exist in my palette, but for me it's like my insurance. Uh, if I need the dark black color right now immediately and if I don't have a time to mix it I can use that but I prefer to mix it all the time so this is my insurance if I need a black but again best idea just mix it so now you know all the all the colors what I'm using in the order the full set uh, of the colors what I'm using it's 18 colors here is it but because this is the traveling, we travel to a beautiful Armenia. That's why this is a travel palette. Instead of my studio palette, which is look like that. So here is a little bit more colors. Uh, we have a here plus the moon glow, Indian yellow, sub green. But all that basic uh, guys still there.
And the last step, I'll, I'll take this liner just to make the final details. It's more a uh, noise, you know, compared to the create the objects, I create the noise. So you can see it's done. Uh, the mountains look pretty soft. It's a good background to focus on, on that buildings here, on that beautiful old building. And we have a good enter into our uh, painting. We just miss the this important part here. Thank you for a question about the palette. Uh, this is my studio palette. Uh, this is a prototype. So I'm, uh, I'm using that uh, last year. We make a, a lot of modification before I, I'm really happy with how it's look like. And after the, this uh, prototype I used last six months and uh, almost every day. So it's uh, great stuff. I hope it will be available uh, in the end of the February for the 12 colors. And it's real bamboo and uh, anti-rust metal here pens and the special plastic for mixing the pigments. So it's nice stuff. Uh, just wait, soon it will be available. We changed the construction of the connection. So that's why it takes a, a long time to build a really, really nice prototype. So now it's done and soon you will find it. So we finish it with that. Uh, Again, if you have any questions, you can uh, ask that questions uh, in not just in the chat because we now we finished our video. After that, in, in just tape your questions after the video, and I believe I will find the time to answer. And again, if you have a chance, join me to the trip to the beautiful Armenia because the country is incredible. You can see that it's uh, you know. E e <laughs> These look like a something unusual. And uh, as I say, it's not just a painting tour, it's the tour to discover the country, including the beautiful kitchen, uh, great quality brandy, and beautiful view like that. So if you have a chance, join me. And again, thank you very much for your time today. You still can continue to ask me the questions if you want, just tape it in the chat after the video and Happy New Year. Yeah. Thank you and see you in the two weeks and new uh, live streaming. Bye bye.